Yo, 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 it's your boy Scan Man. And I just jumped out the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard. Now for Lum. They say I'm big and like somebody, but won't call no names. No. But I bet you want this game and I don't play no games. No. So they say Alright, so we got the one and only Scan Man jumping off the porch with us today. Welcome, bro. Appreciate it, my brother. What it do, what it do. Appreciate yeah, I'm you. Feeling great. How are you feeling today, man? I'm good. I'm blessed. Yes, blessed. Sir. No, I appreciate you coming by today, too. Thank man. you, man. Appreciate you for having me. Yeah, man. So to kick it off, introduce your people sitting up here with you today, too, man. All right, well, uh, I got my right-hand man right here, Total Chaos. You know what I'm saying? First Italian Sicilian rapper. Uh -huh. I got my boy here, Psycho of Memphis. Mr. Uh -huh. I Wanna Smoke. Trig Bambino. No lacking, no lacking. Third, no lacking. What's up, man? Some welcome, guys. Indeed. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. So, Scam, man, what we got planned here in Atlanta, man? Are you in and out with it? You hanging out? What we doing? No, nah, man. We, we in and out, man. We, we, we here to show love to you. Okay. We here, we here to kick it with you, man. We talk it up. Nah, that's what's good, man. So, you know, you got a lot of history that we got to dive into, man. So, let's do it. First off, let people know you're from Memphis, so let them know what part of Memphis you're from. I'm from South Memphis, Riverside. Okay, okay. Riverside. So how would you explain your come up in South Memphis, man? What was that like for you coming up? Man, coming up as a younger man, it was it was it was it was wild, man. You know, it was uh it was always it was fights here and there, it was always shooting here and there, you know, but you know, I was lucky, I I played basketball, so I had a a, a, a slight escape, you know yeah. what I mean? But you can't escape the hood though, but you know, it was it was wild coming up. Okay. But I wouldn't I, I wouldn't change for nothing in the world. It made me who I am today. No, I understood, man. All right, so looking at Memphis today, how would you compare, you know, what's the city like today compared to when you was coming up? It, it's pretty much the same. You know, the, uh, the game stays the same, but uh, the players change. You know what I'm saying? So it's, 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 still, it's still crazy. You know what I'm saying? It's still uh, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. It's still gutter, gutter. You know, but these, these little young cats that's coming up these days, they, they on some other shit these days. <laughs> They on something else. I don't know. They yeah. on something else. Yeah, it's like you said, when you guys were coming up, there was a lot of fights. Yeah, Nowadays, yeah, yeah. no one's fighting. Nah, ain't nobody Everyone's fighting, Everyone's grabbing man. the stick. Everyone's it, grabbing nah, the Nah, nah, back in the day, man, you know, we'll, we'll fight, you know what I'm talking about, shake hands and get back to doing what we're doing. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? But not today, man. These folks out there, they out for revenge. You know what I'm saying? You can't, it, they crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Now that you, you know, yourself older, man, do you consider yourself like an OG? Are you giving guidance out to the, to the youth out there in Memphis right now? It, my, every day, every day I see, I see a little young fella doing something that I was doing back in the day. I'm like, yo, that ain't the way to be doing it. But, you know, do what you want to do, but this ain't the way to be doing it. You know what I'm saying? But they're going to do what they want to do. But, you know, I try to, I try to teach and uh, coach these, little young, these, these young cats every single day man because I, I hate to see them falling down the way they are yeah nah, you know what I, mean? man. I feel like they need as much guidance as they can get man exactly. whether they want to listen to or not that that's not on us you know what i'm saying yeah. that's on them yeah. but at least they need to hear this shit. yeah they need to hear it you know what i'm saying because we we heard it coming up mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying did we listen some we sometimes did, did you know, some sometimes we did. didn't yeah. and that's the same way it is now you know what i'm talking about only thing you do is just give them the foundation and if they gonna listen, they gonna listen. If they ain't, they ain't. Yeah. You know what I mean? Ain't nothing you can do about it. Yeah, sometimes that experience will be the best teacher though. Exactly. It's like once they exactly. go through it, they think back like, damn, he told me not to go down this road. Exactly, you know? I told you so story. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. That's it, man. So you mentioned playing ball. Uh, you gotta let these folks know you was McDonald's All-American. Oh, man, you did your research, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> this ain't no joke, man, so talk about yeah, that, man. Yeah, yeah I, I played ball. I was rapping and playing ball, man. I was, uh, I was one of the top four uh, point guards in, uh, in the city and the state, matter of fact, in 95-96. And uh, had an opportunity to play, play against Kobe, play with Kobe, hung out with Kobe. Oh, shit. Uh, had a nice relationship with him. You know, it was, man, years ago, years ago, long time ago. Yeah. But, uh... Yeah, my uh, I came up playing ball before I was doing music. You know what I mean? So, but uh, and when I got into the music, you know, I was doing ball and and uh, doing music at the same time. So it was, you know, it was it, it was a journey. You yeah. know what I mean? Because I was I was living in the hood, but I was blessed to go to to Bridecrest. It was all white school, so I was blessed to go to a, another school to get away from the away from the hood a little while. You know what yeah. I mean? So. Kept me out of trouble. Okay. 
Okay. So did you go to college to play ball? Or? Yeah, yeah. I went to college. Uh, I had a scholarship. I went to Three Rivers Community College. Okay. Papa Bluff, Missouri. Okay. What was that experience like getting outside the city there? Man, it was it was it was great. <laughs> it was great, man. Uh, leaving home, but you know, I was already used to traveling because you know uh, I play a lot of AAU ball. So okay, you know I was already used to traveling and doing stuff like this. So I was already used to being on my own. So it wasn't it wasn't no different. It was just um, another experience just being uh, living in another city. You know what Understood. I'm saying? Yeah. So you mentioned playing against Kobe, man. So I gotta ask, yeah. like, did you know he was probably in high school at the time, right? So like, did you see his potential then? Like, oh, I know this kid's special already. Oh, the, 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 he 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 had NBA scouts after him in '95 and '96. You know what I'm saying? I played against him in the uh, in the uh, ABCD camp. Okay. And it was back in 96. And that was my first time when I talked to an uh, NBA uh, scout. Oh, really? You know, because I played against him. <laughs> and I played a good game that game. You okay. know what I mean? So, but uh, it was, uh, man, that boy had, he had talent, man. We knew he was going somewhere then. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but what he exploded into once he got into the league is just like, wow. Yeah. Wow. He was definitely special. Right? Yeah, That's sure. he was. He was. Yeah, so you mentioned juggling like uh, rap and uh, basketball at the time. So did it ever come to like, a, you know, a crossroads where you had to choose one or the other or? I mean, you don't see me playing basketball, so you see what I chose. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I chose. You yeah. see what I chose. So, you know, uh, yeah, it was always a struggle, man, because I love doing both. I love being on the stage. I love interacting with fans. You know what I'm talking about? Whether it's, you know, on the court or off the court or on the stage or whatever, you know, it was always fun. I loved doing it. Yeah. But, you know, music just just took a side that, you know, basketball just couldn't fill up no more. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So how do we get the name Scan Man or who gave you that name? Well actually the actually the name came from uh when I used to rap with uh DJ Feli, that's who I first started rapping okay. with, with DJ Feli <laughs> and DJ Rod. My name used to be called Scandalous Nigga. Cause me and Coops nigga was in a group a long time ago. We were like 12, 13 years old. Yes. He was Coops the nigga before Coops the nigga. <laughs> and I was scandalous nigga. <laughs> and so by then when he got with Paul, you know, he already had the name Coops the nigga. So I had to think of something else. So my partner Rob was like, man, look, you ought to call yourself Scan Man. So I, shit, I, just, I said, all right, cool, let's just run with it. So I just ran with it, wasn't even thinking about it and shit. Hey, here it is, a household name now, so. Okay. Appreciate you, Rob. <laughs> so, um, Coop, he ends up uh, introducing you to DJ Paul, is that right? Yeah, yeah, rest in peace, Coop. Yeah, Coop introduced me to DJ Paul. Okay. Yep. So, what year is this? How? 95, late 94, early 95. Okay. That was right before, when, when, when I came, they was just, they had just got done mixing the uh, Mystic Styles. Oh, really? So, I didn't okay. make it, I didn't make it on that. So, they had just got done with that, so. I made the all the second cuts, but um, but yeah, Coop introduced me to Paul. Okay, so did Paul start fucking with you right away, or how does that go? Uh, well, he called Paul on the phone. Paul heard me rap. He was like, "Look, can you come to the studio tomorrow?" I'm like, yeah, we, I can do that. Came to the studio, did a first song called "Making Stain," make, make a stain. Yeah. Uh, after that, he called me back. Was like, "Look, I got another song for you to get on." Came back to the. Uh, to the studio, did another song called Running Lip. After that, he was like, we're gonna put you in Triple Six Mafia. All right, cool. <laughs> so from then, it was on from now. Yeah, what was that experience like during that time? Like you said, Mr. Style's about to drop or it's out now. They, they blowing up outside of Memphis at this point. Yeah, too. yeah, it, man, it, was, it was wild, man. It, it was great, man. You're talking about a, a young cat, 16, 17 years old, you know what I'm talking about? You know, you got you got people screaming and running and, and running after you and shit like that, man. You know, it's it's it's, it's a crazy feeling, man. It's, it, it, it took a while to get over the fame shit. Yeah, and you was also in a group with uh, Pat and MC Mac too, right? Yeah, the cars. The cars. Okay. So how did that whole thing come about? Was that before you met Paul or? Nah, that came. Well, during the time we was all together, we had it was probably about ten members in uh, Three Six Mafia, probably like ten, eleven of us. That's it. And so once we started getting more business, business, you know, Paul and Juice was like, look, we're going to start breaking up and start making groups because, you know, 10 them niggas can't make, can't make <laughs> no money. on every song. Yeah, right? and you can't, y'all can't make no money. You know what I mean? So, 
So they decided to put uh, me, Mac, and first it was uh, K Rock, rest in peace, K Rock, because okay. Pat was locked up during that time. Oh, shit. And so uh, whatever happened with K Rock between K Rock and Paul and them, I don't know, I don't get into all that. Uh, he departed, so then we brought in Pat, and so then when we made the first album, okay. I come across the first album. Uh, talk about this running lip song, mm -hmm. man. This is a classic. Like I say, that was the first song, one of the first songs I got on with uh, with Paul and them. And, uh, and at that time, I didn't even know who was even going to be on that song. Hmm. We didn't know there was going to be a, a, a Killer Clan song. Really? You know what I mean? Nah, we didn't even know that. I came to the song, dropped my verse, and left. Mac was passing me on the way he was coming in. I was on the way out. And me and Mac really didn't know each other then. And the next time I heard the song, you know, it was all all of us on the song. So I was like, damn, this shit came out hard as fuck. Huh. So uh, they decided to put us all in the group and shit. Hey, we just did the cause thing. Yeah. So how did those studio sessions work out? With, since you said it was like ten people in the group, man. Yeah. Was it, were you all all you guys in the studio at the same time, or was it whoever's in there is jumping on the song? Well, yeah, most times whoever they are, whoever had their raps together and ready to go. You know what I mean. Uh, especially on, on a lot of those posse songs. Oh yeah, it was a scramble. You know what I mean? Because you, <laughs> you didn't want to get left off on those. Nah, so. you didn't want to get left off, and then you didn't want to get your ass smoked. So you in there trying to write? I'm talking about the hardest shit, and and that's what I really got known from was those posse songs. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, because you was killing the verses. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I had to. I mean, you got Lord Infamous, you got Coop, you got Boo, rest in peace, all three of those. You got mm -hmm. Chat. Crunchy, you had, you know, all these, Paul, you had all these folks on this song, so you're like, you, you, you gotta bring it. If you don't bring it, you're gonna get lost in the sauce. And then you gotta, you gotta get to the point to where, you know, you gotta be like, well, I, I, I gotta go at least third or fourth. You know, I can't go six or seven, because then by that time, I don't know if I wanna listen to the song then. <laughs> <laughs> but luckily, we had enough heat, you know what I mean, that everybody used to play our whole posse song. The whole song used to get played. We used to do those songs that, it fucking shows. Oh shit. So, yeah, it was fun. It was so fun. the the order you guys show up on the song, that's how you guys rap then? Or was it mixed around after you got after everyone had recorded? Nah, that's how we rap. Oh really? Whatever order you came in. That's, that's how it stayed. That's how it stayed. That's hard, right? That's how it stayed. You know, we, we weren't working with Pro Tools back then where you can just <laughs> flash it around everywhere with the click of a button, you know what I'm talking about? We were working off, you know, 20, uh, big, 24 tracks, you know what I'm yeah. talking about, 32 tracks, so it was a little different. You had to, you had to bring, you know, and Paul number one fucked up about, if you didn't bring the right verse, they didn't like it, they weren't fucked up about taking your verse off and oh, wouldn't real? apologize about it neither. I had, I had one verse taken off a song, but hey. That's kind of how it went, huh? That's how it goes. Yeah. It didn't do nothing but just motivated me. Yeah. Uh, you were featured on the Chapter 2 album too, man. Yeah. Yeah. So Chapter talk about two. like were you guys recording for that album or were you guys just recording songs and it just ended up on the album or? Nah, we just recorded, man. Paul and them used to record, we used to record probably 50, 60 songs per album. <laughs> but those, you know, we just used to record every day, all day. You know, every day was a studio session, every single day. Uh -huh. We was working on something. So, you know, most time they record 50, 60 songs and she choose the, the best 20. 21 songs really? and, and you know it go from there yeah all right so how do you find out that you, you that the song is going to be featured on the album then on the chapter two when it come out <laughs> when it comes out really no heads up before that no heads up before that sometimes sometimes we get a heads up because you no know, we're sitting around we all listen we'll listen to it and see you know what we liked it and what's you know what the album will be like but sometimes you know it'd be by the time the album get ready to come out we you know if you're on it or not okay. most time we know we're on it. And did you expect the album to do what it did? We're talking over a million copies sold. No. We, we, I, I expected for it to do good, but the way it actually blew up, no, nah, I don't think any of us was uh, <laughs> ready for that. Yeah. It's just a classic, man. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, absolutely, it. man. Um, then you guys dropped the, the Kamikaze Times too, right? Yeah, yeah. So talk about the creation for that album. What was that like? Now, which Kamikaze you talking about? You talking about? Oh, we got Time's Up. Time's Up. Time's Up. Uh, man, basically they called us, said it was y'all time. It's time for the Kaze album to go. 
me and Mac had already been, you know, writing and preparing a lot of stuff for the album because um, cause K Rock was was out of the picture at that point. Okay. So by the time uh by the time Pat came into the picture, everything was pretty much already ready to go. Only thing he had to come in and do was just drop his verses and okay. and we dropped the rest of our couple of our verses we needed to do and shit, it was done. Yeah. I think we completed that album in like three weeks, two, three that, weeks. That quick, huh? Yeah, that quick. That yeah. quick. We recorded probably like twenty something, thirty some songs. Mixed them all and I think we probably had 18, 16, 18 on the album, something okay. like that. Okay. Yeah. And what you think of Project Pat when you first met him? Me and Pat always been like this since okay. day one. We always been cool. Pat, he always showed me love. I've always showed him love. You know, it's always been cool. Yeah. I've always been cool. When I heard that he was going to be in the group, I was happy. <laughs> there you I go. I was like, we got an OG. We got an OG. Yeah. And what's the response when the album comes out then? Wow. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy. One song we get, we always get, they play, they play right now to this day, it's Move Motherfucker. Okay, yeah. That's one of the, the, the favorite, boy, we used to kick ass in the club with that song right there, boy. That shit, they used to tear it up. Just like tear the club up, yeah. they used to fuck it up. Yeah, I wanted to ask, what were these performances like uh, during the peak right now? Man, these performances were wild, man. It, it wasn't a show that we went to that it wasn't a fight, something didn't broke out because you know all our music was so energetic mm -hmm. and so crunk driven that it you know, did, you know, drugs involved too, so you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so man, yeah, our shows was wild, man. Yeah. Our shows were wild. Yeah. Love man. the show. Yeah, at least they usually they weren't shooting at the at the clubs at that time. No. It was mostly just fights, you know. No, we had some shooting oh, too. Yeah, some shootouts too. It was some shooting too. It was some shooting too. It wasn't all fighting. Okay. It wasn't all fighting. More so now though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, you also featured on Gangsta Boo's album, uh, yeah. The Inquiring Minds. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, talk about Boo. Boo. What was she like? My, <laughs> my Boo was a firecracker, man. Boo was a firecracker. She loved the speaker of mine. That's mine. for sure. Boo would tell you what the fuck she thinking and <laughs> and wouldn't give a damn how the fuck you thought about it. Excuse my French, but shit, yeah, my boo was uh boo was like a little sister to me. Hmm. You know what I mean? We always been cool, never had no we always you know, when you're in a group you're gonna have your dislikes and your disagreements and this, that, this, that, but me and Boo would probably say a couple of words to each other the next minute, me and Boo right back, this, that, this, that, we cool. We cool that she she forever in life and in death, she gonna forever be mine. Forever have Hard right here. Yeah. Rest in peace, and that song, Life in the Metro, that shit's still hard today, too. Man. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, that's, that's one of my favorite songs, too, man. I love that song. I yeah. love that song. We never got a chance to perform that song, too. I wanted to perform oh, really? that song. Yeah. Oh, we never got a chance to perform that song. Yeah. Long live boo, man. Um, so what happens with you guys in 3-6 uh, uh, at that time, after that? Because it's like they started to hypnotize minds. Did you guys go over with that, or...? Yeah, we uh, we went over for a minute, okay. but uh, like you know, they was they was kind of busy with the uh, with the three six with the three six thing, which is which is cool because that's the the foundation with everything started mm -hmm. on started from. So you know what I'm talking about. But you know, at this same time, you know, I just can't sit around and just sit back. You know yeah. what I mean. So if I'm sitting back and sitting, sitting around, when it's my time, when, when my numbers call. I ain't gonna be ready because I'm not doing nothing. You know what I mean? Real. So, you know, we kind of, when me and my, my uh, last business partner, we, uh, you know, started our own label and started doing our, doing our own thing for a little minute. Okay. But it, was, it wasn't a part ways type of a thing, but when it came down to business, the business side made it lead that way. So it wasn't nothing personal or no, you know, no shit like that. You know what I mean? It was business with, Made it had to part ways like that. Yeah, did you guys ever have a talk with uh, Paul or Juicy at that time? Like, what yeah. are we doing? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. We had we had a lot of talks with him. I mean, you know, we see him now. We still talk to this day. If I, you know, if I see him, if I okay. run across him, you know what I mean. So, like I said, ain't no, ain't no bad blood nowhere. Yeah, nowhere. No, I owe them cats a lot. You know what I mean. I learned a lot from them. Nah, absolutely. Shout out DJ Paul, Juicy J. Yeah, um, and then you guys started your own label at that time, right? Mm-hmm. That was Kamikaze at the time. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. what was it like kind of, you know, branching off on your own at that time? 
an experience. You know what I mean? <laughs> you really, uh, you know, going from artist to CEO, you really start to see what, you know what I'm saying, the business side is like. You know, just the artist, the only thing you worry about is just writing a rap, showing them to the studio, dropping it, dropping your 16 or your eight bars or whatever, or mm -hmm. chorus. You back in the street. Nah, but when you the CEO, you gotta make sure the A, the B, the C, the D, the E, the F, the G, all the way to Z is covered, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, but it was cool because I, I've always been business oriented anyway. So, yeah. you know, I love it, you know what I'm saying? And talk about the new label you got right now. The new label well, right now, it's Nephilim Music and Nephilim Distribution. Okay. You know, uh, we didn't kind of, I didn't kind of moved over to the distribution side now. You know what okay. I'm saying? So um, that's what we're doing and promoting now is our distribution company, which is Nephilim Distribution. And, um, you know, trying to help young artists and entrepreneurs, man, you know, uh, take control of their music and trying to show them the ropes and show them how to, how to really do it instead of just, you know, it's more than just, putting your music out and just sitting back and thinking you finna get paid and finna get millions, finna get this, finna get that. It don't work that way. Yeah. <laughs> it don't work that way. You gotta put the work in. No, absolutely, man. What, what would you say were some of the challenges you faced starting your own distribution company like that? Man, just, um, it's just find the right connects. You know what I mean? Because it, you know, it's not really about what you know, it's about who you know, mm -hmm. too, as well, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, you got to get out there. One thing about the distribution, you know, you, you, you have to make, you, you got to make those relationships. You know what I'm saying? You just can't sit back and then just think like, oh, okay, it's just going to come to me. No, you got to get out there. You got to talk to these Spotify folks. You got to talk yeah. to the Apple folks. You got to talk to all these people. Diesel, uh, Ty, they all these folks. You got to build relationships with these people. You know what I mean? And, and also with the artists too as well. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, I mean, we're not just a company that, okay, just come just sign up and just, we'll take your little, your little money or your 15%, put your music out and leave you, you know, the struggle on your own. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, we, we have tools set in place that help artists to further their careers. You know what I mean? Not for them to just, not just be artists, but, but be business men and business women. You know what I mean? No, absolutely, man. So what's some of the goals for the distribution company like? Some of our goals, man, is, um, you know, we do, we do uh, pub, uh, publishing administrator. Okay. We, we help artists in, with their publishing. That's huge, man. Yeah, yeah, because a lot of artists don't know that, you know, most time publishing is, is where you get paid at. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They, they think streams is where you get paid from, but you're not going to get that much from streams. You know what I mean? Getting a fraction of a penny. If, if it's a fraction of a penny, <laughs> you know what I mean. I don't even know what a fraction of a penny is. <laughs> <laughs> Not but nah, you gotta, uh, you know, you, you know, and we try to help them, uh, you know, find all the, the different avenues of revenue that there is that you can be making. You just don't want to just go into the studio, put out a little record. And then think it's that's where it's gonna yeah, be. Yeah, think you're just gonna blow up yeah, overnight. Yeah, it's gonna blow up. No, you did the catapult other different areas of business, like like us. We have a we have a, a video production company. We have a, an apparel. We have a clothing line. You know what I mean? So you you take that music and help make your music use it to open up doors for other mm -hmm. things, other revenues. You know what I'm talking about? Because you're not gonna see no money just sitting there just waiting for streams. I'm telling you that now. No, that's real shit, man. Yeah, talk about the merch that you guys got. See, uh, most of y'all rocking, and then you got some more in the back too. Oh uh, yeah, we got um, we got t-shirts, we got we got jeans, four outfits, we got shoes. Oh, I didn't even peep jackets. those with the jeans, yeah. Yeah, uh, we got jackets. You know, nice little inside, little, okay, little, yeah. little forever inside, keep it nice and warm. Oh, by the way, this is our female artist, Ferocious Wade. She coming out with a, uh, she dropping a single in a couple of weeks. This is The Menace, CEO. This is my brother, Blood Brother, just her producer. Y'all be on the lookout. I'm one of the hardest mixed engineers. Y'all need some mix, holler at him. So how'd you discover her? Through him? He discovered her. <laughs> Say no more. He discovered her. <laughs> so what's yeah. she about to drop? Well, she got the drop. She got she got a new uh, singer from the drop called Drop. Oh, for real? <laughs> That's what it's called. Drop. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of it's a real nice little female anthem, you know. Something for the the ladies to get hooked on to get the men hooked on, you know. Yeah. Something real nice. We can't we ain't gonna give you too much. Y'all just just be ready for it. Yeah. Be ready for it. Drop it in a couple of weeks. Yeah, also, I forgot to ask, where can people get the merch at? You got the website set up? Yes, or? yes. You can go to nephilimdistribution.com or nephilimmusic.com to get all apparel. Okay. So are you still making music yourself today? Still making music myself. Still okay. making music. Still producing. It, it, it's it's kind of hard to do when you, you know you when you run the business trying to take care of you know other artists, making sure they're straight. But yeah, I'm I'm still doing. I got some in the works too as well. Okay. So what inspires you? We're over 30 years in the game right now, right? I appreciate that, man. Yeah. <laughs> appreciate. It. Not 30, y'all. 20. 20. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Man, it just my you know music, man. I just I just I love making music and and when you listen to some of the stuff that that's out here now and no offense to nobody out here, it's a lot of good stuff, but it's a lot of bullshit. When you hear a lot of shit, it makes you wanna get back in the studio and be like, Man, uh really? Man, let me get back in the studio, man, cause this, this show these folks how to do it. But uh yeah, that that, that that keeps me motivated, man. I just love making music, man. And um, uh, you know, I love seeing other people you know, dreams come true. You know, I love seeing other people when they when they, when their music is blowing and doing what they want to do and they they living their dream. Yeah, I, I love to see that. I love to see that. Nah, for real, man. So, what's the single you pushing right now? Right now, I don't have a single right now. Right now, we're pushing Trig Bambino. We're okay. pushing a uh, Ferocious Way. Uh, we got a Memphis Mafia music compilation that we are uh, finna bring out. Hmm. Uh, we're pushing that. Me and Crunch is currently working on some. Oh, I saw some, you guys in the studio cooking. Yeah, there. yeah, we working on some stuff right now. Uh, him, and, uh, he right now, him and Chad doing their promotion on their album right now. So we kind of okay. cut back for a little minute, but they're still coming for y'all. And uh, we got another. Um, we got Big AOK. That's uh, one of our Latino artists from Florida. Okay. And uh, yeah. I got Diablo. Uh, D Diablo. She a Latino artist we working with out of LA. Uh, it's Fresh, which is uh, one of my in-house producers. Got him a mixtape coming, and Crazy C. So we got a lot yeah. that we working on. A lot of shit on, on the man. way, huh? We got a lot we working on. And I also got a documentary that I'm working on too as well. Oh, really? So, and okay. some movie stuff and works too as well, so. Nah, it's big right there. So we got, we got a lot of stuff in works. Y'all finna see a lot from Nephilim, a lot. Yeah. Um, I wanna ask you about Coopster, man. So I think, you know, fans know him through the music, what was it like away from the music? Like, what was Coop's like as a person? Though? Rest in peace, Coop. Coop was a uh, loose cannon. Man, <laughs> that man, that man had so many different personalities, man. It was just, it was crazy, man. But he was, he was a real good-hearted person. You know what I'm saying? Real. He gave you the shirt off his back and and take it back from you at the same time. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> just being real. That was my guy, man. That was my guy. You know what I'm saying? You might well say my mama adopted Coop, man, because Coop lived with me for a long time, for about oh, really? three, four years. He stayed with me about three, four years. And um, yeah, Coop was, man, we were like, bro, that, that, rest in peace, man. Yeah, long live Coop, man. Uh, what's your thoughts on the music scene in Memphis today? A lot of artists blowing up out the city, bro. Man, Memphis is, Memphis is hot right now. Oh, yeah. Been that way for a couple of years too. Yeah, yeah. Memphis is real hot right now, and I and I mean that in two ways. It's hot far as like the rappers coming out of Memphis are hot right now, cause you know people are doing their thing right now, and Memphis is hot right now, cause a lot of these a lot of these rappers ain't getting along. You know what I mean? You know they beefing for no fucking reason. You know what I'm talking about? You know everybody want to be on top. Everybody want to be the king. You know we we all kings in our own right. You know what I mean? So, there's enough money out there. The government ain't gonna stop. You know what I'm saying? Stop printing this shit, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? The government right now keeps saying we trillion dollars in debt. <laughs> they still printing they don't money. Care. They, still print they don't give a damn. They still printing money. <laughs> there's enough money out there for everybody. <laughs> everybody get their money. But uh, yeah, Memphis. Memphis is real hot right now. People are looking on Memphis. I mean, you, if you people are going back to uh, sampling stuff from the '90s from us right now. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Everyone wants that sound. Man. Yeah, they want it. They want it. And uh and we appreciate it because the chicks look good. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate it. Um, 
Uh, what's some advice you would share to the youth coming up right now, then? Learn the business. I say that in every interview I give. Learn the business and stay out your damn feelings. You learn the business, you got no reason to get in your feelings. You know what I'm talking about? You know, these, these cats, and they just, they just don't know. They, they, they don't put themselves out there. You ask them what's their goal to, to, in, in their career, and they say, I want to be the biggest rapper in business, the big, big, biggest rapper in the industry. Okay, that's cool, but be the biggest businessman in the industry. Then you can be the biggest rapper in the industry. Oh, yeah. You know, because if you don't know the business, how the hell are you going to get your music out here? You know what I mean? So a lot of cats, my that what I, that what I say. Learn a business. That, that's that's the most important thing you can do. In in this industry, is learn a business mm -hmm. and don't burn bridges, because you'll never know who you're gonna need later on down the line. No, that's real. One person might be down here and you up here, and then next thing you know, them, you know they, they they switch, them <laughs> them weight switch. So you know, don't burn bridges. No, that's real. Like I like how you said, learn the business. Cause this shit's changing every year. Yeah, it's changing. You know, it's yeah, completely yeah, yeah. different business than when you first ended the game. But. Wow, it, it's way different. I wish if we had social media back when we was doing, <laughs> man, we would have been millionaires back then. You know, it was, wow. Mm -mm. I would, man. In order for us to get out here, man, we had to go to the actual hood. Yeah, to go and, city to city. Yes, man. we had to risk our lives to actually get out here to be seen, to be heard. We couldn't sit back on the phone, take a picture, or wrap a couple of lines on, on into a phone and, and immediately post it to social media and the shit go viral. No, yeah. hell no, we had to get out here and wear all our jewelry in the middle of the hood and try to get out here with CDs and posters in hand, folks throwing your CDs on the ground. You about to whoop the ass because they threw your CD on the ground. <laughs> like, nigga, I just paid $2.50 for that CD. You're going to throw it on the ground and listen to it first. <laughs> but nah. Yeah, that's learn the business, man. Learn the business. Get you some books, man. Whatever. Go to the library. Google. That's I mean, the internet's right there at your yeah. fingertips. Yeah. I mean, y'all kids on the phone all day anyway. Google. Learn the business. They got lots of shit out here for you. Yeah, real shit, bro. But don't think you're finna be a millionaire overnight with streams. Nah, there's only like one or two artists that's doing that these days. Yeah, one or two artists that's doing that. Yeah, I know. So what's the next game, man? Nephilim distribution. That's next. That's what's now. That's what's from the that's, that's present and that's the future. Nephilim distribution. If you need your music distributed, if you need a good solid foundation for your music, come to Nephilim distribution. And go ahead and plug your social media, let everyone know where to find you at. Man, you can find us at Nephilim Distribution on Instagram, Nephilim Music Official on Instagram. You can catch me, Scamming the Nephilim, on Instagram, Scamming the Nephilim on Facebook. You can catch us at Nephilim Distribution on Facebook and Nephilim Music LSC on Facebook. So, any guys, shout outs you like to give before you wrap it up? Man, shout out to my everybody on the stage, my whole team, because uh, without, without them, I couldn't be doing what we doing now, you know what I'm saying? Everybody at this, at this, on the, right here, plays a very pivotal role in this machine right here. Cause that's what this is, it's a, it's a machine. The machine got several parts, you know what I'm talking about? And everybody play a role. Shout out to everybody on this, uh, on, on, on this stage right now. Shout out to It's Fresh, Big A-OK. -okay. And shout out to DPC, shout out to YS Tracks. That's my little brother. He, Hardest, hardest producer right now in Memphis. Does all, most of our money bag, yo stuff. A lot of folks in Memphis right now, go check him out. Cycle of Memphis, Total Chaos, Menace, Wade, Trey Bambino, Scamman, Nephilim. We out it. They say I'm big and like somebody, but won't call no names. But I bet you want this scamming, I don't play no games. So they say I'm right.